Hello and welcome to the 50th episode of the Tiger Highline Online, the number one place to find out what's going on at CF from broadcast students. Here are some of this year's candidates for student office. Austin, Alec, and Hunter present this story. Hi, my name is Sarah Asher and I'm running for secretary. I believe that I am a very qualified candidate for this position due to my active involvement in Student Senate and sophomore leadership this past year. In Student Senate this year, I helped out with many events including Homecoming Week, Tiger Trot, and Dance Marathon. All of these events had a successful turnout and I plan to improve and make these events more open to the rest of the community rather than just the school. I am a friendly and easy to go to kind of person and I will be open to listening to all of the students opinions and ideas and I will support them throughout. I love being involved with the school and I love being a tiger so vote for me Sarah Asher for secretary. Hi, I'm Michael Flancha and I'm running for Student Senate Treasurer. I have two good reasons why you should vote for me. One, I'm an experienced leader. I'm involved in sophomore leadership, student senate, and the MVP program. Over the past year, I've helped plan events such as the food drive, dance marathon, and on many other fundraisers. One thing I'd like to accomplish as your treasurer is bringing a program called Rock Iowa to our school, which provides high school seniors with the opportunity to learn more about Iowa's voting process. The second reason that you should vote for me is that I'm the only candidate running for treasurer. So remember, on election day, vote Flancher for treasurer. Thank you. It's the eye of the tiger. It's the thrill of the fight. Rising against the challenge of a rival for the position of vice presidency. Hi, I'm Lily Conrad, and I'm running for the position of vice president for Cedar Falls High School. Now, I'm going to be countless reasons to vote for me, but first, let me take a selfie. Okay, well, for this past year, I've been an active participant in student senate and junior leadership. So I've helped organize different things like Tiger Trap, Blood Drive, Food Drive, uh, the homecoming, I'm organizing prom right now. But you know, running for vice president, it isn't about just listing off stuff that you've done in the past. It's about helping pave the way to the future and making next year a lot better than it was this year. So I have a couple ideas of what would make next year a lot better. One thing would be like, make some more school spirit. Maybe we could organize some more tailgating before home football games and get more people involved in the school activities, like maybe have a back-to-school bonfire, or maybe get some more ideas from people. Like, I know a lot of people wanted to organize a winter formal, but just not enough people were committing to the idea and actually signing up. So if you can get more people involved, get some more school spirit going, like, I think we can get a lot more done next year. Like Helen Keller once said, alone we can do little, together we can do so much. Now, I know you think all my ideas are like totally gruel, but running an above average school takes more than just a president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and staff. It takes the entire student body. If our school's a snowman, we can build it up together. Every person in CFHS is worth melting for. Now don't be silly. Vote for Lily. My name is Ariana Mitra, and I'm running for Cedar Falls Student Senate Vice President. I have been an active member of Student Senate and various other leadership groups throughout the past two years, and I love being involved in having leadership roles in our school and community. This year, for example, I came up with the idea to build a hospital library in Jaipur, India, where the quality and environment are far worse than those in America. I'm currently implementing this idea with book drives and fundraisers with the help of our amazing Student Senate the Public Library and Covenant Hospital. This is just one example of the qualities, the leadership qualities I show. But I don't want to bore you with that stuff. I truly believe that I would make a great candidate for Vice President because of the passion and vision I have to make Cedar Falls High School the best it can be. I would like to bring the student body closer together and um, create a better environment for our students. I would love to implement more ideas like the Tiger Den and better our communications with the rest of the student body so we can hear your ideas and help to carry them out. I want to have all of your voices heard and I would really appreciate your support and votes. 
When elections come, please vote Ariana Mitra for your student senate vice president. I know people make promises all the time, then they turn right around and break them, but I could be that girl to take them. And I won't stop until you believe it, because CFHS, you're worth it. So don't act like it's a bad thing to vote me, Ariana, for VP. Hello, I'm Agatha, and I'm running for student senate president. Hello, Cedar Falls. If you don't already know me, I'm Agatha Fennick. I love to dance, and I love to bake, and most importantly, I'm running for student senate president. I would really appreciate your vote in this upcoming election. I love to serve my student body, and being president would give me the best opportunity to do that. But as a voter and a constituent, it's not only important that you believe in me, but it's important that you believe in us, our student body, and what we can accomplish together. We have a phenomenally talented student body, and we need to use that potential to create a supportive family community here at CF. Wouldn't our school be so much better, so much happier, if we all deeply and vocally supported each other in our endeavors? Imagine, for instance, if someone you didn't know came up to you and wished you good luck at your track meet or your band competition because the whole school was buzzing about how much they wanted you to do well. That is the type of community we have the opportunity to create here in this next year. Some projects I would like Student Senate to facilitate to create this community would be Toilet Talk newsletters, because I went up and put these in all the stalls for Dance Marathon, and I think they were a really good way of getting out the word. Also, an online forum for submitting queries to Student Senate so that people can voice their opinion easily more easily, even if they don't come to student senate meetings. And finally, I want to have Pollock style lunch gatherings in the Tiger Den, facilitated by student senate, other leadership groups, or sports team to promote whoever has an event coming up. It would be like team meals for the whole school. And I really, really want to lead the, the creation of this community. I love public speaking, I love leadership, and I love student government. I'm not scared to stand in front of anyone and voice the student body's opinion. I'm the one at student senate meetings who is always speaking up, asking for others' opinions, and, and talking about different thoughts. But I'm not just a talker. I do whatever I can to help our student body. For instance, for student senate this year, I didn't just say, oh, you know, let's have a good dance marathon. I was there at basketball games, asking every single person who walked in the door for donations. I went out into the community and got door prizes. I baked treats for the actual event, and I played in the dodgeball tournament. I'm a doer, and I always put in my best efforts. For example, at one dance team practice, I literally kneed myself in the face and gave myself a black eye because I was dancing so hard. Also, in another role of president, I am very comfortable being a liaison between the student body and administration. Aside from being student senate secretary this year, I was also a student representative on the school board my sophomore year. And this year, I represented the school as public relations chair of the State of Iowa Youth Advisory Council. I've talked to the governor about cyberbullying le legislation, the lieutenant governor about mandating foreign languages in elementary schools, and various state representatives and senators about different issues that affect youth. This is what I love to do. Most importantly, I just want to emphasize that if we work together, we succeed together, and that is the type of community we have the opportunity to build here at CF in this upcoming year. So get out there and vote on May 16th. And when you go vote, vote Fennec for president. Hi, I'm Drew Stenson, and I'm running for class president. I'm Drew Stenson, and I'm coming in like a wrecking ball as a candidate for class president. I have worked and will continue to work hard to make sure our school is great. This year I served as a student representative on the school board, managed the wrestling team, and made sure to see our school's great plays and concerts. They're ten times better than anything I could ever do. Thanks to you, I was elected treasurer last year, giving me the chance to bring change to the school I love. I promise that if elected, I will be the most successful president ever and work just as hard as I have in the past. I will always have a minute to talk to you about any issue that our school conf confronts. Because when we work together, no one can stop us. I'm going to talk about how I can make our school an even greater place to be. For our school to become one of the best schools in the state, we need to focus on school spirit. We need to make sure that every one of you can have fun in your high school experience by finding a club or a sporting event that you enjoy participating in. For me, there's nothing better than going to see one of our fantastic plays, like the great modern version of Hamlet, seeing an incredible con 
con music concert and going out to cheer at one of our many sporting events. The most important thing is that you find your niche where you feel comfortable. If you need help finding a group that fits your interest or want to start one that does, I would be more than happy to help you. So come along if you feel that happiness is true. I want everyone at Cedar Falls High School to, make, to be comfortable, so I intend to make sure that the high school has more places to park and more areas to eat in. Most of us like our sleep in the morning. I know I do. But the problem is, if you get here a short time before the bell rings, you'll never find a parking spot. We do not have enough space, and some of the teachers even take spots in our lawns. So my plan is simple make a very strict rule that students and teachers lots are separate. That way everyone will have at least some of the space they need. Lastly, I'd like to talk about the best part of the day, lunch. Juniors and seniors love being able to leave the school to go to one of our many great restaurants. I know I prefer Jimmy John's. However, once you get to your lunch, get your lunch, there are a few options to sit and eat. There's either your car or the front lobby, and that's about it. I'd get picnic tables in the back area of the high school to make sure that students have a nice place to go eat lunch outside on a nice spring day. If you elect me president, I will do everything in my power to meet these goals. So ask yourself, who would be a good president for Cedar Falls High School? I care about individual student problems and school-wide issues as well. You could say that I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. When you get to the polls, remember, just screw it. I'm Drew Stenson, signing off. You stay kind of Cedar Falls. Mrs. Bruni's Foods class have been putting their skills to the test by running their own cafes. Austin, Alec, and Hunter have the story. Foods teacher Gail Bruni opened a mock restaurant for her Foods Co-op class. Okay, well, right now in Foods Co-op we're doing little restaurants where we go around and give menus to teachers or students who want to order food from us. And in Co-op, we all have a job in restaurants, so during this unit, uh, we just get like a feel of what it's like to actually run a restaurant, what it's like to prepare all the food, make sure it's all delivered, make sure we get money all taken care of, and it just gives us a bigger like range of what more restaurants have to do to stay on track and be successful. Okay, the purpose of it is to give hands-on experience to, to, to the students for a real restaurant experience. Many of them do work in restaurants and have a lot of experience they can even share with the class. They pick out their own um, recipes, they test them out, they cost them, and then they prepare the menus, and then they are the managers the day of their restaurant. And then the other people are the workers and they assign the job. So it just gives them a brief, hands-on type thing that they can can um, learn a little bit more about the food service business. Um, this is our restaurant, Food Bar and Grill. Sheet, uh, we cut uh, you the make oh, your own okay. recipes Someone throughout the semester and uh, test and them out where you go. So, and, 10, uh, oh, so there should have been 22 desserts. And then as we get uh, to our restaurant, you uh, send out menus and stuff to the customers. And uh, they order the food they want, we set up our lab day, we cook the food, and then we send it out and you get money for it and for the stuff and then you make a little extra for your kitchen. It's a fun idea, uh, gets you down to the concept of food service and that's the main idea of the class. And right now I'm making a bacon cheeseburger, that's one of our special dish, main dishes. That's about it. This has been Austin Anderson, Alec Larson, and Hunter Heiselman, reporting for the Tiger Highline. The National Guard paid a visit to PE classes. Trey got the story. Last week, you might have seen a rock climbing wall towering over the CFHS football field. 
On Friday, April 25th, the Iowa National Guard came to Cedar Falls High School to promote the advantages of joining the National Guard and also to give a break to the everyday work of school. Connor Williams, a former student of CFHS, explains to us what the National Guard can do for students. We're out here to try and get out in the community, uh, make people aware of the opportunities the National Guard has right now. We're using this rock wall right here and these uh, bugle sticks we got going on right over there. And uh, just trying to get people involved, active, make them more of the opportunities because we can pay for your, completely for your college, for uh, if you go to Hawkeye, UNI, Iowa State, Iowa, any of those colleges pay completely for your tuition. You can make about 200 bucks a month, plus about 300 to go to school full time. Michael Kuntz, a senior, explains to us about his fun experience with the rock wall. Just checked out the rock wall, <laughs> climbed it in like 15 seconds on the hardest one, so, I mean, wasn't very comfortable, but I made it. <laughs> the National Guard can provide many opportunities to students. If you'd like more information, visit www.iowanationalguard.com. Yep. This has been Trey Browner, Darrell Jackson, and Tyler Ferrero reporting for the Tiger Highline. In Mrs. Timmons' honors class, Katerina created this collection of voices from Main Street. Welcome to If the Shoe Fits, a podcast with pictures. I am Katerina Walther. For this project, I walked up and down Main Street in Cedar Falls, Iowa, and asked people thought-provoking questions about themselves and their lives, then took a picture of just their shoes to show a snapshot of their day and possibly the life they lead. Both the answers and shoes were fascinating on their own and put together. Think for a moment. How would you answer the questions? Um, one that sticks out the most is being the slowest kid in the neighborhood. I was never fast. I was never picked for any games because I was slow. It's hard as a kid being slow. I didn't do anything to change it. I decided to not, well my sister is only a year older than me and she was really fast. So then I always ended up playing by myself and I ended up like, that's kind of how I got into art and drawing. I would just sit and draw by myself. So I guess that's how I overcame it. Yeah, playing by myself. So, um, are you glad that that happened so you were able to get into art? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was never really interested in sports anyway, but I wanted to fit in. So, being able to run was a way to fit in and be fast. So, I think later on, it wasn't so much of a challenge because I fit in with more creative people rather than athletic people. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, my dad was an alcoholic and my mom was mentally ill. So my family was extremely chaotic. Is that enough? I could go on and on. <laughs> if you have more to say about that. <laughs> uh, so, so things in my family were really chaotic. My father was um, a raging alcoholic, so he screamed at us all the time. And he was a doctor, so we had to pretend that he wasn't a raging alcoholic. So Because he told us that if we told people he was um, drunk all the time, people would stop coming to him. He was a pediatrician, and um, that we would be, uh, he, we would have to go live in an orphanage because we would be taken away because he was an alcoholic. Wow. Then when I was in the sixth grade, my mother had a nervous breakdown and had a, like a psychotic break and was in the psych hospital. And so uh, I have a lot of brothers and sisters, all of whom are younger than I am, and my littlest brother had just been born, so I had to like raise him, and I was only 13. How did you manage all that? That must have been really difficult. Um, I read a lot of books. <laughs> I had a very active um, fantasy life. <laughs> I used to pretend to myself that I was adopted, actually. <laughs> because then I thought, you know, these are not really, these are not my, really my parents. Um, my, my mother, my birth mother was like a princess or something. <laughs> I used to have all these imaginings of, um, that I don't belong to this family and I'm just like doing, you know, a good job. Um, so I like to, I like to be responsible. So I think that helped. And, um, uh, I have a good sense of humor. <laughs> so that helped. I also like taking care of people, and so I took care of people a lot, so that worked out okay. And how do you think that affected who you are today, that in your, when um, you were 13? 
Um, I, it had a major impact on um, who I am today. A, I'm a counselor. Um, <laughs> so, and I think lots of counselors grow up in kind of crazy families. Um, and I'm a play therapist. So, um, like my uh, caring for kids and my sense of humor and my sense of like trying to find positives even in things that are not positive, I think started when I was a really little kid growing up in that particular family. Um, thank you for your time. That was, that was great. Wow, well, that's a deep question. Uh, I think courage for me was a time in college when I realized that I had to start working harder to be able to uh, get the grades that I thought were acceptable for my performance. And uh, it really was some soul searching whether I wanted to continue on with my current major and what I thought that I like to do versus change majors or maybe give up on uh, school altogether. So I had to uh, really pull it together and, and gather those thoughts to, to continue on with what I was doing. And I'm, I'm glad that I did in the end, but at the time it was very difficult because a lot of my friends were partying a lot more than I was, but I had to sit there and actually study them when I, when I needed to for a test. Um, what made you realize that you needed to change what you were doing? Um, it was just purely performance. Uh, I wasn't wasn't getting the grades that I thought were acceptable for, for me. Um, so it it really was just metric based. It wasn't an emotional thing. It was just uh, I needed to do better. I did, I wasn't doing as well as I was in high school. That's for sure. How did you change? Well, it was it was kind of a combination of things. I um, started studying with a group of people. I started getting help in classes that I wasn't doing as well in um, because they offered a lot of help if, if people needed them. And then it also just, if you talk to your professor, it actually is kind of amazing what they will tell you and how you can change the way that you're working on a class to perform better. And um, what are some things that you actually changed? What's something, advice you would give to someone going through the same thing you did? Um... Focus. Uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but focusing on what you're working on is actually a lot more important. Uh, you, you learn that later on in life, just because you have to focus on things. But um, also, you, you, you have to put in the time, right? It's not going to come naturally to you, necessarily. Now, it may come naturally to some people, but not everybody. Um, and then you just got to stop partying. <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, my. Uh... There have probably been uh, several times. Uh, I used courage when I got married. So why did you use courage when you got married? Because I didn't know what the future held in store. I knew I wanted to. Uh, I knew I wanted to do it, and uh, I knew it was a good bet. But uh, but uh, I wasn't sure what the future had in store, and it was a big commitment. Mm -hmm. So what did the future hold in store for you after you got married? Well, it held uh, in store quite a bit. We had a, we had a nice family, have a lot of nice grandchildren. We've been married for uh, 51 and a half years, and, and uh, so life has been good. Wow. Um, what were you feeling before you got married? What were some specific emotions that you had? At the time, I was kind of a macho kind of guy that didn't feel much of any emotion, but I'll, uh, I'll tell you that when I got up in the morning, I had a rash all over my body, but only the part of my body that was covered by clothes. And by nightfall, the rash was gone. And that told me something later, <laughs> but I didn't really recognize it at the time. In other words, I was apprehensive. Yeah. yeah. Were there any specific concerns you had or worries? Okay. Pardon? Any specific concerns or worries that you can remember you having? Sure, I felt like I was responsible for making my wife happy, and I didn't know if I'd be up to that on a 24-hour-a-day basis, seven days a week, for as many years as I could see into the future. And were you responsible for, for that, actually? Did it turn out? It took me a while to realize that I was not uh, totally responsible for that, that we had some joint responsibility. And uh, although there were some unhappy moments, uh, during those 50 years, they were, for the most part, uh, pretty darn happy. All right, thank you for your time. You're welcome. 
I that's that's a difficult question because I think of love in so many different ways. I guess the first time I actually experienced it had to have been with my mom. Um, like not only just seeing it but living it too. I think definitely with with my mom. Um, how do you know? How did you know that you loved her? Oh, how she took care of me as a kid. And I think I know more now than what I did then, you know, of, of her showing it. Looking back, you can see it more than you could then because you don't really realize it then. But um, how she took care of me and stood up for me and wanted what was best and showing it, you know, hugs and kisses and picking me up every day and dropping me off with my friends probably. So do you do any of what she showed you? Do you use that in your life at all? Um, yeah, I think I'm returning it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So do you still have that, do you still have um, a strong relationship with your mother like oh, you did then? Yeah, absolutely. I, I talk to her every day. Actually, we work in the same building. I can see her, her office from my office. And so definitely all day, every day, every day. Yeah. Um, did you ever have trouble with your mom where you thought maybe she wasn't as important to you as you thought she was? or Never. Never. Not once. Never. Um, my mom and I are pretty similar people and we function and communicate in the exact same ways. I don't think my sister would say the same though. I think she has struggled. But never. Never. And I don't think I ever will. No. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, it really is. My friends envy our relationship. Definitely. Do you think there's anything that caused that or just because you're similar people? Yeah, I think it's because we, we function in the same capacity. I think we think the same and we care for others in the same. Mm -hmm. You know, some people say that opposites attract, but I don't, not in this case. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Do you have a story of a specific time where you really showed your love for her or you remember her showing love to you? Mm -hmm. Specific. I think it's just this, I think every day, and just the day-to-day -day things. Um, we eat lunch together almost every day. I think that's a good way, you know, when, when we miss lunch, then it's like a, we miss something. I don't know, like I forgot something that day, but I don't, I can't, I think there's too many specific scenarios to single one out. Yeah. Okay, well thank you for your time. You're welcome. First time I experienced love. When was the first time I met my wife-to-be when she was holding a still warm plate of chocolate chip cookies? But I'm sure I experienced love like from other family and stuff much younger than that. But right. the event is just not coming to mind. Mm -hmm. So um, where did you see your wife-to-be when she was holding a plate of still warm cookies? Uh, when we were both going to college in Grinnell, Iowa. So did you meet her at college? Or yes. How did you two meet? Uh, I was going to do a security patrol on her end of campus with my friend who had need of a substitute partner for that weekend and we walked over there in the rain. So her roommate was standing, who was Al's uh, girlfriend, was standing there with a couple of towels for us and Terry was holding cookies. Um, when did you first realize that you loved her? I should take the fifth on that one. <laughs> I don't know, maybe five or six times of hanging out and doing things together after we'd first met. Uh, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Probably graduating from high, uh, from college and having a, a very respected job graduating because not everybody was able to be as fortunate as I was. I graduated college in 2009 and a lot of people just didn't get jobs because there weren't any jobs available. So that was really satisfying for me, uh, finally having that sense of accomplishment and I knew that my parents were very proud. So that was um, that was probably the, the best thing. And what was the job that you got? Uh, I'm a diesel calibration engineer for John Deere. Um. What exactly do you do for that? How did your schooling help you get to that? Um, so, I, I'm a mechanical engineer by trade. Uh, 
or by schooling, and then I did multiple internships. Also, I did an internship for Whirlpool, and then Caterpillar, and then John Deere, and then at the end of my uh, John Deere internship, they offered me a full-time position once I graduated from college. Was that something that you knew you always wanted to do? I knew that I always wanted to be involved with powertrain and engines, but I didn't know that I would be working for a farm company or a farm machinery company. I thought that I would be working for an automotive company. So it was a little bit different pace, but then again in 2009, no one wanted to work for an automotive company because they simply just weren't making money and they were going through bankruptcy and things like that. So. It's, uh, it's nice now that I'm here that I've experienced it, but had I had the choice early on, I don't think I would have made the decision to work for John Deere. Okay, thank you for your time. No problem. That's it for the 50th episode of the Tiger Highland Online. Be sure to check out our website to see some of our other offerings. Stay classy, CF, and see you around. <laughs>